Hello ballers and welcome to the next in our series of the Legion class previews with Blizzard's giving us decent insights. As always, I remind you that this is the foundation of the specs. All the talents and artifact weapon changes and all that kind of stuff is missing from here. So a lot of spells and the more depth of the spec might come at a later date so we'll keep you updated on that as and when but these are the initial changes that you'll be seeing from walls of draenor as we step into legion all right so with that out of the way let us begin with the holy and we'll use our voice again after spending much of their lives in temples studying ancient doctrine preaching the tenets of their faith and pledging their full devotion to the divine powers they follow the most adept priests leave their houses of worship to serve on the battlefield as shepherd to the flock there they use their holy powers to bless allies and mend wounds and while most stay behind the front lines to aid their comrades these holy champions are also capable of smiting foes and carrying out sacred justice they're also morally opposed to the use of shadow and void magic. Rather, they are exemplars of the incredible grace and power of the divine and the light. And even death cannot fully stop their healing capabilities. Oh, lordy! So pure, so innocent. My god, yeah, they're still going to burn your face. So, we surmised in our Legion hype, or hoped, could say, one of the most positive reactions we got to any of the Legion hype videos from the audience was that healers were generally inclined to look for ways to become more skillful by being given bonuses for using their spells correctly. Right tool for the right job. Well, Blizzard didn't go down that route. Uh, they decided against that. And what they decided to do is focus on a more Mr. Pandaria and Cataclysm style of things where healers will do damage. And that's kind of across the board. You will do damage and that will be your filler sort of moments. If you're not healing anything, you're probably going to be doing damage. And in some cases, damage will do more benefit to other things. Blah, 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 blah. It's not going to be like that. In fact, if anything, they've kind of simplified the Holy Priest even more than they did in the past, even now. We've lost some core abilities. Circular healing is bye-bye. Yeah, spells like that have gone by the way. In fact, most of the spells they're giving you here is the basics. Not to say Circle of Healing won't be a talent. We don't know that, okay? We don't know if there's certain things that you consider part of the holy arsenal right now won't reappear as talent or artifacts. But in fact, most of the new healing spells are, are new, I should say. Most of the reworked healing spells, there's not exactly many new ones, uh, actually mean that those, those spells like Circle of Healing would be redundant. So it's kind of safe to say they're gone. But not definite, okay? So, just bear that in mind. You can see as we go into the holy spells here, I've actually only pointed out the two big new ones. The spells that are remaining, I'll just mention here, which are heal, which does its usual job, a slow, efficient heal. Flash heal, fast but more expensive. Prayer of healing, prayer of mending, and renew. So, those are the basics that are sticking around. Everything else you can think of that's basically on your bar right now is gone, including chakras. Sad times. Sad times. Chakras had the potential, in my opinion, to be fantastic, but they seem to have, uh, they oversimplified it in WAD to make it less than useful, and now they've gone the whole hog and just removed it and given up on the idea completely. So, a little salty about that. So, what have they replaced it with? Well, two big holy words. Holy words, serenity. A one minute cooldown that heals an ally for a lot. Their words... Uh, it's a miracle! It's a miracle! It heals an ally for an absolutely massive amount. What does that mean? Are we talking lay on hands-ish amounts? What does that mean? What does that mean? And we'll find out as soon as I can show you what that means. I will show you. But that's what it does. And then guess what? There's another version. Holy Word Sanctify. Guess what that does? It's a miracle! And it heals into a target location. Yeah? Healing up to six allies within ten yards for a huge amount. I imagine visually this thing's going to look awesome. Because it's not casted at a player. Although maybe there's a glyph that does that or something along those lines. But you actually like throw a light bomb essentially. You basically chuck this, sh throw this holy grenade of justice into the pack and it'll just heal people for huge amounts. What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know what that means, but it should be a lot apparently. So let's put some uh, critique to this. Uh, oh, finally. Oh, serendipity. I have to mention this. It's kind of vital. So serendipity has been reworked as well. It's still a passive, but if you cast flash heal or heal, your single target stuff, it reduces your holy word serenity, your single target miracle. And if you cast prayer of healing or prayer of mending, the cooldown on the AoE miracle, sanctify, is reduced by six seconds. Uh, similarly with DPS, if you use holy fire and smite, you'll reduce the cooldown of chastise. The talent they've given us to talk about is Apotheosis. 
A three minute cooldown that means the effects of serendipity, those cooldown reductions, are increased by 200%. Okay, so nothing. One thing we can say is none of these spells are particularly interesting. We have AoE heals that lead to a big AoE heal, and we have single target heals which lead to a big single target heal. That's it! That's how the Holy Priest is going to work. On top of that, you have Renew. Okay, so I don't, I'm not being sarcastic when I move over to the gameplay example of what this is probably going to play like, but that's probably what it's going to play like, something very similar. Now, I think we should bring up something that is already doing the rounds with the with the priests who kind of have a grasp on their shit, is that spells that just do a lot, either, either do way too much or not enough. And that is about it. There's no real in-between there. They either do way too much or they do not enough. What's the playstyle going to be? Probably just keeping renews going as we do now because it seems, or by the wording, it heals for plenty. But you've got to remember, when we talk about healing stuff, guys, it's going to come down to the numbers. A lot of people would have predicted we'd always use Prayer of Mending and then that kind of goes by the wayside, blah, 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 blah. It really comes down to the live numbers. So healing playstyle is a real, real vague guess. Super vague. But the likelihood is if uh, it's not AoE damage, you're going to be working to use your normal heals, heal and flash heal and renew and uh, using heal and flash heal to probably get serenity and as much as possible right that's generally going to be about it or some people will just save holy word serenity because it heals for so much that you kind of want it in a certain time and place that'll come down to you and in aoe moments you'll use mending and prayer of healing to reset your holy word sanctify the fact of the matter is those spells are one minute cooldowns you're gonna have to cast quite a few spells to reset it to sort of use it twice in a big aoe moment so the likelihood is you're going to be resetting it for those one particular moments and get one use out of it and then go back to your normal healing style, which is only two buttons, potentially one. Once Mending's bounding, or maybe Mending's no good anymore, who knows? Uh, and that's about it. Real super simple. Uh, very friendly, and I hope that... I'm, I'm just hoping and praying with Holy. I don't really have a problem with it. It's keeping its role as the big... Uh, the big holy, right? The big heals, heals. That's it. That's the way holy's always been. Heal, healers that play holy priests heal, heal damage. That's it. They don't do absorbs. They don't do anything else. They just heal lost HP. Uh, so they are definitely sticking to that model. I'm really hoping though for guys who want some interest in their play is that the talent system and the artifact system certainly adds more complexity to this because on the face of the foundation, it's really super easy. Like, super basic to get some, re maybe get some reasonable re results. And with the talents definitely affecting the idea of just increasing the cooldown. So, let's just say you're going into a quake, you know, big AoE quake, lots of ticking damage. Uh, the best thing you can do for that is probably pop Apothe Apotheosis and start, and then use your Holy Word Sanctify straight off, big heal. Uh, only up to six, by the way, only heals up to six. Then spam the shit out of Prayer of Healing as quickly as possible, which is still expensive. It's 8% mana, by the way. Uh, so that's a lot of fucking mana. Uh, and Prayer of Mending. And then uh, use another Holy Word Sanctify. And that's pretty much your arsenal right there of how you're going to deal with that. Uh, I don't know how you guys feel about that as long-term healers. It depends but maybe on the level of play. Uh, I'm just really... I guess my biggest sadness here is that the loss of Chakra, it had potential to go really far. Uh, but the bonus is it still does what it does. If you play a Holy Priest now, it's still going to do what it uh, what you wanted it to do. It's as simple as that, really. So let's move over to this. Uh, okay, so this has been massively reworked. So we're going to spend a little bit of time on this. And it's a gamble by Blizz. This is a total gamble that may not pay off. We'll see. Uh, so let's get into what the description of this is now. Some priests pride themselves on pragmatism. They understand that light casts a shadow, that darkness is defined by light, and that true discipline stems from one's ability to balance these opposing powers in services of a greater cause. While these priests possess many holy virtues to aid their allies, they also dabble in the dark arts to debilitate their enemies, always exercising immense discipline to keep themselves away from the brink of insanity. Many would say the ends justify the means. Scriptures, both virtuous and vile, should be studied and understood to protect the congregation. So they're going for a full 50-50 approach. Pure hybridization here, guys. Pure hybridization, plain and simple. You will. 
You will be doing damage with shadow spells. You get Mind Blast and Smite on the same cooldown. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Mind Blast is way more expensive. I don't think people spotted that. Uh, Smite is like 0.75% mana. Mind Blast is 3% mana. So no doubt Mind Blast does way more damage. Uh, which is kind of like your burst heal. I have to explain this, okay? So you understand it. So we get Atonement. It's, but it's a passive now. So your healing spells, which are a new spell called Plea, Power Word Shield, and Shadow Mend, another new spell, also give your allies a buff called Atonement. So you specifically target people to get this buff, and it lasts for 15 seconds, right? So you buff them with Atonement by healing them with those three spells. When you deal spell damage, so when you attack, you instantly heal all targets affected by Atonement for 50% of the damage done. Now, it's important to know here, this, this is not split healing. If you put Atonement on 20 people, right, and you start dealing damage, they will all be healed for the maximum possible 50% of the damage dealt. It's not divided up. Doesn't matter how many people you get Atonement on. It's just more difficult to get Atonement on all those people, and obviously it's going to run out because it only lasts 15 seconds. So that's the kind of trade-off there. But the more people you get Atonement on, the more people will get that raw healing. It's not going to be diluted in any way, shape, or form. Okay? So and then your mastery obviously increases the healing transferred through Atonement. So now you understand how Atonement works. There's this buff that you place on people and target them for your Atonement healing. It's not just going to seek it out. The game's not going to go, Hey guys, who needs healing? Oh you, here's some healing for you and some for you. Now you have to say, I want Atonement on the tanks. Now I'll DPS and that damage will then transfer into healing onto those tanks. It won't heal anybody else if they don't have the Atonement buff. So the ways this is being done is plea. Which is 1% mana. It's a quick, efficient plea to heal for a minor amount. It's like a, it's more like a target. Although 1% mana seems like a lot for what it's supposed to do. It's more like a you get one, you get one, you get one. Okay? It's very, very quick. It's instant cast. So you can spam a torment on all those pe on people very, very quickly. You also gain Shadow Men. This is an interesting idea. Uh, it kind of plays into the, the theatricality, I would say, of what the disc is supposed to do in the lore we just read earlier. So it kind of costs 3% mana. It wraps an ally in shadows, giving them a huge heal, right? It gives them a huge heal. It's one and a half second cast however they're going to get a dot after this and it's a dot that seems to tick every second until they've taken like half the amount of damage that you healed okay or they leave combat simple as that so it's half the amount of da total damage from all sources is what they're going to get this dot damage so it's a very it could be a very dangerous spell if you used incorrectly and of course power shield now is a six second cooldown guys so you know it's not like spammable 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 and you gain power word radiance a burst of light heals a friendly target and their five nearest allies for a moderate amount and applies atonement for 50% of its normal duration. So like seven and a half seconds. And that costs 7% mana though. So you can, if you're a bit noobish and you've like, oh shit, I fucked up. I haven't got atonement on as many people as I need to get atonement on. You can use Power Word Radiance, but it's going to be costly. Very, very fucking costly. I would point out it's a two and a half second cast and only lasts seven and a half seconds. So, ouch. <laughs> Pretty much ouch on there. You're not going to get many damage spells in if you cast like two back-to-back -back Power Word Radiance or anything like that. So, something to bear in mind. So, now you've got Atonement on the targets, okay? So, then comes in your offensive spells, which are Smite, Mind Blast, and Penance. So, Penance is now a purely DPS spell. Something you should know, okay? Something you should know. So, Penance is a really uh, a pure DPS spell. And it kind of forces to become a very powerful but quite cheap spell. So, Smite is super cheap, but obviously will do low damage, right? It will do low damage, so the healing you get out of it will be pretty low. Mind Blast is way more expensive, but does loads more damage. So that's like Mind Blast now becomes essentially your flash heal. Right? Are you understanding where we're coming from? Smite's like normal heal. Mind Blast will be very, very expensive, and but will heal for a lot more. So it becomes like a flash heal. Very, very cool spell, but it's going to cost you. Penance costs 2.5% mana, so only slightly cheaper than Mind Blast, but it does. it's probably going to do lots and lots and lots and lots and lots, right? Lots and lots of damage. So this is going to be the most important spell of your healing arsenal. Because you then gain a passive called Revelation, where Smite and Mind Blast have a chance to reset the cooldown of Penance. Okay? So there will be some math there, whether or not you want to uh, just spam Smite, because it's super cheap in order to get more Penances off, because it has the same chance of Mind Blast, and Mind Blast is more bursty. So there's a lot of depth here. It's kind of interesting. I think people will be pissed off at these chases. I'm not. I think this is actually a very, very cool idea. Like, one of the most exciting class changes I've seen so far. Easily. And I'm not joking here. Because this now takes discs from a level where, let's be honest, a lot of people re-rolled discs. And this is why I think a lot of people will be angry. And I've got to be careful how I word this. 
there are a lot of tremendous disc priests out there, really good, who know how to push that spec to its very limit. And I've helped a lot of people get up there. Although I'm not there. I don't play disc a lot. I don't like, really like healing. But there are plenty of players who re-rolled to disc just to guarantee themselves a raid spot, because every raid wanted a disc priest, and were literally just spamming bubble. You know those guys are out there. They were spamming bubble and clarity of will, and that was about it, and still getting solid results. You could do that with a disc priest in Wallace of Draenor, and you can do that now. You can stand there, bubble, 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 bubble. Oh, clarity of will, clarity of will, clarity of will. Bubble, 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 bubble in AoE. Clarity of will on the tanks. Bubble, 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 bubble. And get decent results out of that. That is not going to work at all now. That is absolutely not going to work whatsoever. They have really, like, not only did they raise the skill ceiling, they basically put fucking TNT on the ceiling and blew the shit out of it, right? You're really going to have to plan ahead of where your atonements are going to be. Fuck this up, and you're just going to look like a twat, because you will do no healing. There is no point in, like, trying to AoE heal people with fucking Mind Blast spam while you've only got atonement on the fucking tank in yourself, right? It's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything at all. So you really have to bear in mind how much damage you're causing. Now, they're saying it's going to be... You're going to be like an equal parts... Let's talk about the other side of the coin. Equal parts damage dealer and healer. I really worry about that. That's so hard to balance. Because I... I mean, you guys know it as well as, as I do. Is there a point where a fight is balanced in such a way? And Blizzard might have to try and balance fights where... There are points where there's just no need for to have an extra healer. Right? If we had an extra heal here, we'd essentially be AFK and we need the DPS. But there's later down the line, or vice versa, where we really could use that extra healer. Then you're going to want a Disc Priest in there. Because they're going to mix those two roles. We have the extra healer when we need it, and we have the extra DPS when we need it. If at any point that balance isn't so finely tuned, and what you might find is better healers and better DPS actually push Disc Priests out of the raid. Because if your healers are of a generally better quality overall as a team... They're not going to need that Disc Priest support. They're not going to need it. And you can slide in a pure DPSer who will just be more useful to the raid at that point. And vice versa. So it's really sort of a balancing nightmare. I hope it pays off. I just wish that Atonement actually did something else. And they went with some sort of buffs and hy proper hybridization where we're actually boosting other players and finding good use for them. But in terms of a skill cap, what we might find on the on the other end of this is a really, really good Disc Priest actually shits on so many encounters and makes them so much easier. Very highly potential for that. But if you're not a good Disc Priest and you're struggling to manage Atonement and get the best out of it, you're going to be replaced, I think. You're going to be replaced. So I'd love to see from down below... What's your thoughts? Because we have people who play in the top world guilds who watch this show, and we have people all the way down to the bottom who are still learning. What are your thoughts on this? I'd be interested to know. So, of course, let's finish up on that shadow. That shadow being completely reworked. No mana, no orbs, all gone. You are now going to go insane! Crazy insane here, Peter Andre. <laughs> Let us read. The light in which many priests bathe is brilliant and effervescent granting them immense divine power. But the bright brightest light casts the darkest shadow, and from within this blackness, a rival power dwells. Shadow priests fully embrace this opposing polarity, their faith equally resolute as their holy counterparts, but focused on shadowy magics and mental manipulation. Like all priests, they dedicate much of their lives to worship, but they derive their power from the void straying dangerously close to the domain of the old gods. To truly understand such ancient, corruptive influence is to be driven mad. This is the state in which these dark priests thrive, embracing insanity and feeding off the minds of their opponents to reach terrifying new limits. Well, that was cheery, wasn't it? Very, very cheery indeed. What a happy-go-lucky class this will be. Right then, so what's changing? As I said, no mana, no orbs. What we have now is something called Void Form. Void Form! Okay, this is a passive. So what you'll have now is a bar that is your insanity bar where you are becoming insane. If you reach, or when you reach 100 insanity, you'll become Void Form. If you've seen the picture, you kind of grow tentacles and all sorts of weird stuff. And it changes your spell. Sound familiar? Yeah, we just got rid of Demonology, and suddenly it's making its reappearance. Interesting, to say the least. Uh, so it changes a couple of your spells and increases your shadow damage by 30%. The most interesting part of this is that it gains 2% haste every second while you are in Void Form. And you'll have spells that can keep you in void form longer so blizzard intends this spec 
to revolve around getting in, getting yourself insane and then being insane for as long as possible to stack up this haste buff and keep the haste buff up as long as possible the haste buff's gonna last 20 seconds after void farm ends so what spells do we have mind flay nothing new actually mind flay mind blast vanturic touch and shadow word pain now the difference is when you go into void farm your mind flay changes to void flay same button and it extends shadow word pain by three seconds and your mind blast extends your vampiric touch now you might ask why when you're not in Void Farm, Mind Blast will give you 15 Insanity, so you're going to be keeping Mind Blast on cooldown as you ordinarily would. Vampiric Touch and Shadow of Pain, every time they tick, grant 3 Insanity as well. So it's important to keep those spells up, particularly while in Void Farm. Beyond that, there ain't nothing else to Shadow Priest right now. So that sounds really dull, I imagine, to a lot of people. Although it certainly it does indicate that when you're AoE and you've got many dots ticking and Mind Blast going off. I would shout out here that uh, Shadow Word Pain now has the Mind Blast uh, reset built into it. Very, very cool. Uh, it has that built into it now. So that's that's going to happen all the time at a 10% chance, chance. So you can imagine while AoE, you're going to have Shadow Word Pain ticking on absolutely everything. Getting lots of free Mind Blast, going insane, and just nuking the fuck out of stuff. That's the general idea, and gaining this mad haste buff, right? So, the idea, I think, I think the idea with this is based around the haste buff. The haste buff could get to the point where Shadow, Shadow Priest plays ridiculously fast. Like, crazy, crazy fast. To the point that it feels insane. That seems to be the thematic angle they're aiming at with this one. And I'm okay with it if it plays like that. If it plays like that. I'll be more than happy to see ludicrous haste levels. Things ticking everywhere. And feeling like I'm going absolutely berserk. I'm just hoping. And this is the drawback potentially. That once I'm over the initial. Oh my god this is really fast. And I become very used to it. That this isn't super boring. Because what actually happens when you change the Void Farm as far as we know? You actually only press two buttons, Mind Blast and Mind Flay, and that's it, right? While you're in your super mega mode, right, and you've gone completely fucking bananas, you just cast Mind Flay and Mind Blast. And that is absolutely it until your Insanity Meter runs out. Nothing more, nothing less. So I'm genuinely hoping that the talent system and the artifact weapons add a lot of depth to this in some fashion. I would really hate for void farm to look visually cool and just go the way of demonology honestly where being in it just wasn't exciting it really wasn't in fact in this case you actually do less than you would do outside of void farm we just don't want that to happen the talent they showed us was of course oblivion for those of you worried about the on-demand burst at the pull it grants you 100 insanity immediately so your pull would be something like pot vampiric touches it has a cast time then you go ahead and drop a Shadow of Pain, pop Oblivion, get 100 Insanity, go straight into Void Farm and nuke and nuke and nuke and nuke and nuke and get your haste buff rocking and rolling. So, pretty simple how it's going to work. It's okay. It, I need to play it. And I think that's the answer with several of the specs going forward is I need to play this. If the, uh, void, the haste buff from Void Farm is not as much as I hope it is, this looks like it could be extremely boring. But again, we're missing the talents and we're missing the artifact abilities to see exactly how it will be fleshed out. But one thing's for sure, from the basics, it really needs fleshing out. Because right now, the big moment of the Shadow Priest looks super boring. Super, super boring. And we just pray and hope that's not going to be the case. Alright guys, thank you for listening for the Priest Overview. Uh, Mage is up next. I've also already done the Hunter one, so you can go and check that out if you wish. Alright, thank you so much. Bye-bye.